Hello and welcome back to another update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you are watching Boyd News. I have an urgent update for you regarding North Korea and South Korea. It looks like, again, North Korea has fired more artillery shells into the maritime buffer zone, uh, basically the, the border of the South Korea and North Korea um, in their maritime waters. Uh, it looks like they've done this again, um, possibly even on Saturday. Um, they for sure launched more than 90 uh, rounds of artillery fire into the waters um, off the coast of South Korea. And they also looks like there's some unconfirmed reports that on Saturday, there was uh, more than 60 rounds that were fired, but it looks like North Korea has declined or has denied uh, the claims uh, of South Korea uh, accusing them of launching more than 60 rounds of artillery fire. So this is still continuing over there. Um, uh, the Yonpyong Island um, is still basically under attack, or at least that region is in, in the waters surrounding Yonpyong Island. Um, so this is not getting any better. This is, looks like it's continuing. Um, this is the, uh, well, Unconfirmed report on Saturday, but this would be the third time that North Korea is uh, allegedly firing these uh, artillery shells uh, towards South Korea. So we'll go ahead and get into this article here. Uh, North Korea again fires near the sea border with the South. North Korea again fired artillery shells near its 10th sea boundary with the South on Sunday as the influential sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un mocked the South's ability to detect its weapon launches. The Joint uh, Chief of Staff said North Korea fired more than 90 rounds near the rival's disputed Western Sea boundary and Sunday, on Sunday afternoon. It said South Korea strongly urged North Korea to stop provocative acts immediately. North Korea's military later confirmed it used coastal artillery systems to carry out live firing exercises. It said the drills were part of its military training schedules and the direction of the shells fire didn't expose any threat to South Korea. On Friday, North Korea launched about 200 shells. South Korea also claimed that the, that the North fired more than 60 rounds on Saturday, but its rival denied that. North Korea's artillery findings uh, Friday prompted South Korea to have its troops on border islands fire artillery rounds near the, uh, the sea boundary in response. The shells launched by the two Koreas fell at a maritime buffer zone they established under a 2018 military agreement on lowering frontline military tensions. The agreement requires the Koreas to halt live fire exercises, aerial surveillance, and other hostile acts along the border. But the deal is now in danger of collapsing because the two Koreas have taken measures breaching it. Experts say North Korea is likely to ramp up tests and escalate its trademark fiery rhetoric against its rivals ahead of South Korea's parliamentary elections in April and the U.S. presidential elections in November. They, are, they say Kim Jong-un likely thinks a bolstered weapons arsenal would allow him to wrest greater U.S. concessions if former President Donald Trump returns to the White House. So... This is something about that is that this year there's lots of elections going on, um, you know, not not just in Korea, not just here in the United States, but, um, you know, even in the Ukraine Russia war, um, Zelensky is is up for reelection uh, this year, I believe uh, Putin is uh, up for reelection. Um, and then obviously, you know, Biden is is uh, is, you know, up for re-election this year as well, if he's going to continue to run, not sure if he's going to, um, you know, but then there is that possibility that everybody's talking about that Donald Trump may return to the White House this year. Um, and if he does, it's going to completely change foreign policy throughout the entire world. Um, and, you know, Donald Trump has been talking a lot lately in his speeches and at rallies. He's been talking a lot about putting an end to the war in Ukraine um, and, you know, he, he just has a much stronger stance 
uh, which is the way a president should be, by the way. He has a much stronger stance, uh, you know, against all of our enemies uh, across the world, and he puts everybody in their place. And this is the reason why we had no wars under Trump and why we have all these wars now, because we have a weak president in the White House right now, a very weak president. Um, and countries around the world see that. They see that weakness, and they are taking advantage of that, uh, which is why, for example, we saw Putin um, enter Ukraine after uh, Biden got in the in the White House and he saw his weakness. That was his opportunity. So um, this is going to be a very interesting year regarding elections and war because, uh, it, you know, we're going to see a lot of countries do things that are, um, you know, out of the ordinary or impulsive, I should say. We're going to see a lot of impulsive reactions from different countries, especially these countries that have been wanting war for a while now. Uh, this is their opportunity. The, these last uh, 11 months here or so are going to be their, their final opportunity to, you know, complete any military operations or anything like that, that that they want to, you know, complete. So um, expect to see more of this. Expect to see uh, continuation and escalation in, in war. Um, uh, hopefully we don't see any kind of war breakout like in North Korea and South Korea. Um, and, you know, hopefully things calm down in the Middle East, which I don't think that it will right now, not anytime soon. And same with, uh, with Ukraine and, and uh, Russia. You know, these wars are starting to break out just everywhere now uh, because of the foreign policies of, of the United States with our administration. So uh, expect to see more. And, um, you know, make sure, make sure you guys are, are safe. Make sure you're prepared and you have the things that you need um, should, you know, things spiral out of control and, and pop off here out of nowhere. It, it could happen at any moment. Um, you know, just North Korea alone, you know, they're, they're continuing these provocations with these uh, artillery shells, and they're claiming that um, these, these are just training exercises, but, you know, everybody knows that training exercises are always the beginning of war. They, they always claim that it's a training exercise, when in reality it's preparation for war. Um, so, you know, it's very obvious as well that North Korea is ramping up their production of uh, weapons, um, you know, nuclear, nuclear capabilities, all kinds of stuff going on over there. Um, and, you know, South Korea is very worried about that. The United States, we're worried about that. Uh, so let's see what happens with this. I'll go ahead and keep everybody uh, filled in on this. I'll, I'll, keep a, I'll keep an eye on the news and see what's going on here. And um, as soon as I see another update, I will, I will put that out for all of you again. So uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care. God bless.